Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Your Textbook versus College and Career Readiness Standards. Our hosts today are Donna Price and Gretchen Bitterlin, instructors at San Diego Continuing Education Program and co-authors of the Ventures series from Cambridge University Press. You won't be able to see Donna and Gretchen or use your microphone today, but if you'd like to ask them any questions or if you experience any technical difficulties, please use the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Donna and Gretchen. Thank you. Thank you for attending our webinar called Your Textbook versus College and Career Readiness Standards. From now on, we're going to refer to the College and Career Readiness Standards as the CCRs. Um, I'm Gretchen Bitterlin, and I'll be presenting with my colleague, Donna Price. Uh, we both teach at the San Diego Community College Continuing Education Program, and we're both co-authors of the Venture Series. I teach a beginning level class, level one actually, and Donna teaches a multi-level intermediate advanced vessel class, which is a vocational English as a second language class. By the end of our short time together today, we hope that you have a basic understanding of the CCRs and how these standards apply to English language learners. One of the things we hope to emphasize today are the anchor standards in the CCRs that are not commonly present in ESL instructional materials, at least up to the, this time. Then, through showing you sample exercises from ventures that address these standards, we will demonstrate a process for determining how your instructional materials may align with the CCR standards. We will also discuss the shifts in instruction that are required to fully implement these standards. But before we begin, we would like to know a little bit about you. Um, please take a minute to answer the following two questions. First, what is your role in adult education? Just look at the options and choose the one that most applies. ESL instructor, coordinator, administrator, publisher representative, or perhaps another role that's not listed. You should be able to see the, all these roles on the screen. Okay. okay, it's nice to see we have a lot of instructors here because I'm sure you can relate to um, the, the materials that we'll be showing you um, from Ventures. Next slide. Oops, okay, so. So it looks like we're looking for the next question. Okay, the next question is, what is your familiarity with the college and career readiness standards? Choose the one that applies. No familiarity with the standards, a little, or in fact, you may be very familiar with the standards. Let's see what the results look like in a minute. Okay, from your results so far, it appears that um, um, some, of, some of you are a little familiar. Um, so given that, um, we will do a short review of the origin of the standards and basically what they are before we get into the actual um, uh, substance of the webinar. Hi, this is Donna. I'm going to read the first question. Who developed the CCRs? Where did the CCRs come from, Gretchen? The CCR standards were developed by OCTA, which stands for the Federal Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education, to help prepare adult students for college and career readiness. Many of you have heard, perhaps, about the Common Core Standards, now adopted by most states in the United States for K-12 education. Basically, the CCR standards are the adult version of the Common Core standards, but they've been adapted to meet the needs of adult learners. All right, Gretchen, what is the purpose of the CCRs? The CCRs are a set of approximately 30 standards that OCTE has developed 
to guide instructors as they assist students in developing the skills needed for college and career readiness. And another question, what do the CCRs consist of? The CCR standards are divided into five major sections. They are reading, writing, speaking and listening, language, and reading foundational skills. Each section or strand has several anchor standards. There are 10 for reading, nine for writing, six for speaking and listening, six for language, and three for, for the foundational reading skills. So that means there are over 30 anchor standards in total. Each anchor standard has level specific standards divided into five specific levels. A, B, C, D, and E. On your slide, E is not listed because this level is beyond the highest level of ESL and relates mainly to adult high school students. Since the current level descriptors were not uh, written with a focus on English language learners, a special project sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education is currently underway to align these level descriptors in the CCRs with our NRS ESL levels that we have in the United States. If you look at level A, notice that there's only one level for beginning learners. Yet, according to our NRS levels, there are three levels of beginning ESL. So we're hoping that this project will ultimately provide three descriptors for it to cover the beginning level. This project will address the situations such as this. No matter how the descriptors change, however, each of the anchor standards will stay the same. The anchor standard is at the top of the slide. So in this webinar, we're going to focus on just the anchor standards and how they are present in instructional materials. And the last question we're going to ask Gretchen is, what are the three major instructional shifts in the CCR standards? There are three major instructional shifts in the standards. They are in, first of all, text complexity, which is using academic language in reading, writing, and speaking. The second, using citation of evidence. <clears throat> and the third shift relates to reading informational text to develop content knowledge. Text complexity refers to text with unfamiliar content, complex sentences, unfamiliar vocabulary. There are quantitative measures such as lexiles that help determine if the text is appropriately complex. All readings in the Venture series have lexile measures and meet the complexity bands designated in the CCRs. Evidence-based, the second shift, means that you have to find the evidence in the reading or text that supports answers to the questions about the content. Reading, excuse me, building knowledge the third shift refers to reading deeply on a theme. This may include reading more than one article on a theme, doing short research projects, and writing more about the topic using evidence to support the main ideas. Hi, this is Donna again. We just talked about the instructional shifts in the English language arts strand of the CCRs. Now I'll summarize each section of the standards. Whereas the CCRs begin with the reading and writing standards, we are going to discuss the standards in the order we teach the skills in the classroom, listening and speaking before reading and writing. Most ESL textbooks also start with listening and speaking activities. The speaking and listening anchor standards in the CCRs include expressing ideas clearly, and collaborating in pairs and small groups. Also, integrating information from different sources, such as understanding a text, reading aloud, and being able to clarify if something is not understood. An overall summary of the reading anchor standards is greater emphasis on text complexity, as Gretchen said, more focus on expository text, text-dependent questions, evidence-based analyses, and emphasis on reading and rereading. A research study called Reading Between the Lines, published in 2006, stated that 
the greatest predictor of success in college and careers is not a graduate's SAT scores, GPA, or even their critical thinking skills, but rather the ability to read complex texts. The study further stated in the last 50 years, the complexity of texts that students read in their classes had eroded significantly, whereas the demands of college, careers, and citizenship have not. Writing anchor standards include writing to give information and explain something, arguments to support claims by analyzing text, writing clearly and conveying complex ideas with emphasis on planning, revising, editing, and rewriting, which most of you will recognize as the writing process. And there is an emphasis on doing research projects and writing a summary about the results. The language anchor standards include acquiring essential rules of standard written and spoken English, acquiring new vocabulary, particularly general academic and domain specific words and phrases, and understanding words and phrases and their nuances and relationships. The reading foundational skill standards include understanding words and sounds and basic reading skills, typically the enabling skills that we teach in ESL, such as phonics and sound letter connections. Now we're getting to the fun part of the webinar where we're going to show you some very practical teaching strategies. This slide shows a framework to use for determining if instructional materials align with the CCRs. We want to show the connections between the CCRs and instructional activities in our textbooks. First, we give the CCR section an anchor. Then we provide a question that you can ask yourself to see if your instructional materials include this anchor. And finally, we will show examples from ventures that illustrate the various anchor standards. Now that you see the process we use to determine alignment with CCRs, we'll look more closely at the anchors in the speaking and listening, reading and writing sections. The first category is speaking and listening. And again, we are starting here because that's what most ESL textbooks start with. Look at Anchor Standard 1. Prepare for and participate effectively in a range of conversations and collaborations with diverse partners, building on others' ideas and expressing their own clearly and persuasively. The question we need to ask ourselves is this. Do students work with a partner exchanging ideas or sharing opinions? Do they work with a small group to solve a problem or develop a product, such as a poster? One communicative activity is this conversation card mixer, in which people come together in pairs and then move on to other partners. One person in the pair will have a question card and the other will not. It encourages them to listen to each other rather than read. This activity is found online, and we will show you how to find it at the end of the webinar. Hey, Gretchen, how do you do this in your level, level one? These conversation cards are very popular, even at level one. But the difference is that instead of a question on each card, in, for example, in unit eight on the employment unit, each card will be a picture, for example, of a different job. And then learners will stand up and circulate and ask each other, practice that very um, important question, what do you do or what is your job? And they interact uh, and often giving each other even more information. So it really encourages um, uh, collaboration and conversation. Another example in Ventures is the communicative activity at the end of every grammar lesson. In this example from the advanced low level, Students work in small groups to answer questions about personality types, the theme of this unit. Students give their opinions using the useful phrase, phrase language that is provided. After that, they share their classmates' opinions. Now let's look at reading. Reading Anchor Standard 1 states, read closely to determine what the text says explicitly and to make logical inferences from it Cite specific textual evidence when writing or speaking to support conclusions drawn from the text. 
To address this standard, we need to ask ourselves, are the majority of comprehension questions that follow readings and listening passages ones that require information from the passage, called text-dependent questions, rather than from outside the text? What are text-dependent questions? We sometimes call them TDQs. They make the text the expert, and the question can only be answered from the text you are reading. It levels the playing field for all learners, not giving advantage to learners with more knowledge about or personal experience with a certain topic. Text-dependent questions require readers to dig deep into the text to find the answers and point to the parts of the text that matter the most. Here's an example from the beginning high level where students read about goals and answer the questions. All the answers come from the text, not from students' personal experiences. In order for learners to use evidence from a text to answer specific questions, as stated in this reading standard, they need to have the academic language and academic discussion skills. What can we do as teachers to promote academic discourse and discussion in a more formal way? One thing we can do is teach academic phrases and integrate these phrases in the activities we do with students. In this exercise from Transitions, students practice answering the text-dependent questions with the academic phrases in the box on the right. ESL learners need to learn these academic phrases for listening, speaking, reading, and writing tasks. In my classroom, I have posters hanging on my wall of academic phrases that I refer to when students work in pairs or groups. As part of the lesson, grouped students review the phrases before beginning to state their points of view. The CCR suggests that students answer 90% text-dependent questions and 10% non-text-dependent questions to prepare them for more academic settings. The next reading standard we'd like to look at is Anchor Standard 7, Integrate and Evaluate Content Presented in Diverse Media and Formats including visually and quantitatively as well as in words. We should ask ourselves, are there activities in which learners integrate and evaluate content presented in diverse media and formats? Diverse formats mean different displays like text, charts, and graphs. And diverse media means um, print versus radio or video and TV, for example. This is an example taken from the beginning high level where students read a biographical story about an immigrant and then put the information in a graphic organizer. The next example is from the intermediate low level where students have to read and interpret a bar graph in order to report back information. Students should have opportunities to work with graphic organizers and different kinds of graphs as they will see these in college and in work settings. Donna, how do you use graphic organizers in your vocational ESL class? Well, one thing I do, and I really recommend it, is to ask students to bring authentic documents from their workplace if the company allows it. I see that students have to know how to read many kinds of charts and graphs. For example, one student who does maintenance at a hotel has a chart with the days of the week across the top of the paper. His duties are listed on the left, and the day of the week is checked if he has to do that job on that specific day. If he can't read this chart, he can't do his job properly. Explicitly teaching how to read these charts that are provided in our textbooks is critical for students to succeed at work. Another reading standard that is not commonly addressed in current ESL materials is number nine. Analyze how two or more texts address similar themes or topics to build knowledge or compare the approaches the authors take. The question we asked ourselves is, are these activities in which learners analyze two or more texts that address similar themes or topics 
in order to build knowledge or compare the author's point of view. Do these exist in these textbooks? For each reading lesson in books three and four of Ventures, there's an additional reading passage that focuses on a different aspect of the same theme. In this employment unit from the intermediate low level, the two articles focus on how to get a job and have a successful job interview. In the transition student book, students again read two articles on a similar theme. In this case, the articles are on the importance of small talk. In the transitions extended worksheets that are available online for free, students read an article that takes a different stand, why small talk may not be such a good idea. Students ultimately are asked to take a stand and support their opinion with evidence from all three articles. You might remember earlier I talked about text-dependent questions to go with one article. Here we have text-dependent questions that require students to look across more than one text to analyze and compare and contrast different points of view and synthesize the information. In this slide, you can see visually that students are asked to look across all three texts. Okay, let's now look at some sample writing standards that impact ESL instruction. Writing standard number two says that learners need to write informative or explanatory text to examine and convey complex ideas and information clearly and accurately through the effective selection, organization, and analysis of content. So what does this mean? The question to ask ourselves is, are there activities in your ESL textbook where learners write informative or explanatory paragraphs or essays after organizing their ideas in a type of graphic organizer? This lesson is from the intermediate low level. Students use a graphic organizer to brainstorm the qualities of good and bad time managers. After that, they are given a model about someone who is a bad time manager. The students have to then write about someone explaining why they are or are not a good time manager using evidence from the graphic organizer they have completed. One thing we've heard teachers say is, I want my students to write, but they just sit there. They don't know what to write or they don't know where to begin. When students are given enough pre-writing activities, such as a graphic organizer or a, and a model paragraph, they're much better able to put their ideas into writing because they have a paradigm to follow. Writing Anchor 1 state says <clears throat> that students should be able to write arguments to support claims in an analysis of substantive topics or texts using valid reasoning and relevant and sufficient evidence. I think that um, this is different than what we've been doing in the past. Sometimes students are just given writing assignments in an isolated way and not necessarily writing that's based on the reading that they've done. And that's the difference with the new CCR standards. The question to ask yourself about your instructional materials then is if there are activities that require learners to write arguments about a topic using reasons and evidence from a text that they have read. Here's an example from the intermediate high level. First, they use a table to analyze reasons for or against shopping online. Then students read about why one shouldn't shop online. That's like a model paragraph for them and practice outlining the reasons according to the model paragraph. If students can't out, out, put in an outline, something they've read, then actually they don't understand the organization of the paragraph they need to write. So that's a very good exercise. After they list reasons why they shouldn't shop online, students have to write about why they should shop online using supporting details from their own outline. This requires critical thinking that is a huge part of the standards. A few slides ago, we showed three different articles on small talk. Here's another example of three different articles on volunteering. 
also from the transition series. Two of the articles on the benefits of volunteering are in the transition student book. One article about why volunteering might not be so beneficial is in the extended reading worksheets. These articles give students an opportunity to analyze more than one text and write an argument based on evidence from the articles to support their claims. We're very proud of these worksheets and feel that in adult education, they're quite innovative and meet the rigor that is asked for in some of the standards. At the end of the webinar, we'll show you how to find these worksheets online. And by the way, they're all free. Each extended reading worksheet provides a culminating writing prompt. Here is the Unit 3 writing prompt that goes with the volunteering article we just showed you. So after reading about the advantages and disadvantages of volunteering and the issues raised in the three texts, students must form an opinion about volunteering. They must come up with three key points and evidence to support their opinion. In the extended reading workshops, worksheets, there is a full page graphic organizer like the one you see here. This is the organizer for the opinion prompt. We probably all have our favorite graphic organizers similar to the ones you have seen so far in this presentation, but it's really important to think about how to use them uh, thoughtfully and intentionally before asking students to write. The next writing anchor standard that's crucial for language learners is number five. To develop and strengthen writing as needed by planning, revising, editing, rewriting, or trying a new approach. In other words, use the writing process. The question to ask in analyzing our materials is, are there activities in the textbook that promote the writing process? In other words, are there sections in a writing lesson that include pre-writing, revising, editing, and rewriting? This slide shows an example of a writing lesson that addresses each stage of the writing process, even at the beginning level, by the way. This is from book one. In exercise one, before, before you write, there are two pre-writing pre activities, a checklist about soft skills, and an email. Then in exercise two, the write section, students go back to the pre-writing activity in number one to make a list of skills and then write it in paragraph form. In section three, the after you write, um, a classmate checks the writing by asking a few content and language questions and then students revise and rewrite their writing according to the feedback they got from their classmates. Here's another example of a complete lesson that illustrates the writing process, but at a little higher level. It's from the intermediate low level. Students read an informational text about medicinal plants. After they read, they do some pre-writing activities, such as brainstorming and writing down what plants they are familiar with. I've seen how popular this lesson is in our program. I know learners love to share about all the different remedies for various ailments from their own countries. Then they read a model paragraph and answer questions about it. After that, they write using the model to help guide their writing. As in the previous example, the, a classmate checks the writing with specific questions to guide the revision process. Writing standard number seven um, talks about research projects and says that it's extremely important to prepare students for the college and the workplace. The standard says conduct short as well as more sustained research projects based on focus questions demonstrating understanding of the subject under investigation. So to, to analyze our text, we can ask ourselves, are there activities in which learners conduct research to demonstrate or expand their understanding of the topic in the book. In Ventures in the Teacher's Guide and online, there are projects to go with all 10 units. Five of them require short research using interviews and five are based on internet research. The first one you see is from book two and it's based on interview sources. 
Students write questions about important life events and then ask a friend or a relative the questions. Afterwards, the students write the answers on a timeline and present the information to the class. Here's an example from Transitions. This is a project using print or digital materials. Notice that they have keywords if students are using the internet, but the projects can be completed without internet access also. They can use other print sources such as articles in magazines, the newspapers, and even textbooks. Students learn how to summarize and present the results of their research. So I'm, I'm Donna, I'm back. So in this webinar, we have shown just a few of the CCRs that correlate with instructional activities in the Venture series. In this slide, which is available online, you see a chart correlating the CCRs to Book 1 of Ventures. The correlations to the CCRs for all levels of Ventures are online in the online teacher's resource room. So this is what we've been referring to throughout the webinar. This is the Ventures Online homepage. Um, the, the address is there on the screen, and you just need to register. It takes just a few minutes. If you click on the Teacher's Resource Room, you will find the conversation card activity there that you saw earlier, as well as the projects and the other things we talked about. Um, go on to the next slide so we can show. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we just want to show you all the wonderful things that you can get online here to go with the, the book. And you know even if you want to just get ideas for your own teaching, one of the things that we talked about, um, the, the conversation cards, those come from the collaborative activities. So let's say you're doing a lesson, a reading or grammar lesson, and, you, and they're sitting a lot, and you want them to get up. You go to collaborative activities and you'll get a ton of ideas. The other thing we talked about, um, and yeah, in all the levels, that's, we're showing you on the screen. Um, if you, you also want to look at those extended reading worksheets, and those are the ones where the students have an extra reading with maybe on the same theme with maybe a different point of view. Also, we talked about the projects here. And um, as you see, you can have all level, and you can go to any unit, and you can go to any lesson in the unit. So you can really filter it as you go. I really hope that you take a few minutes later on and just go through here, if you're Ventures users or not, and just see the wealth of information here for really it will help your teaching and give you a lot of ideas. So some of you, I think, have written a few questions. And I see that s some of our facilitators have, have answered some of your questions. But um, we have a few questions here that we would like to, to discuss. Um, these, these have come up um, several times. And they also come up when we are doing workshops on the CCRs. Um, I'm going to read a, one of the questions that I saw. Um, this person wrote, I teach a beginning level class. How do we incorporate these standards at the lower levels? And I think Gretchen should be the one to answer this one. From having seen all the examples today, I'm sure you, you realize that a lot of these standards probably seem to relate to the higher levels. But we can do many activities to start building these academic and critical thinking skills at the lowest levels. For example, one thing we should do is use text-dependent questions in our readings um, so that the learner has to go in and get the right answer through referring back to the text. We should also start to teach um, learners academic phrases um, to cite evidence. For example, the article said that, things like this. Um, we should also introduce nonfiction reading passages. Um, that means um, uh, Use, use more informational readings because that it represents the largest uh, amount of reading in the college uh, environment or the workplace. Another thing we can do is to encourage more pair and group work. 
um, to, to build collaboration and encourage discussion. Um, for example, the conversation card activity you saw works well at the beginnings levels as we described. Another thing we can do is start to teach beginning level learners academic terms, such as paragraph and main idea. Uh, at my lowest level, level one, I, in the past, I didn't necessarily ever teach the word sentence, but obviously that's important now, so they understand uh, words like that. They can, uh, oh, sorry, Donna? Go ahead. Oh. I just want to show people, um, again, I'd like to show you where it says collaborative activities. And then you go to basic, the basic level, and then you can pick your unit. And there are there are ten units, and um, there are six lessons in every unit. And in those units, you can find these collaborative activities that Gretchen is talking about. In my classroom today, I actually did one from at the basic level. It was on, from the unit on classroom, and it was. Um, using a, a picture of a, of a desk, a table, and a chair, and then they had cut up pictures of um, classroom objects, things like a notebook, a book, a pencil, a pen. So they cut, we cut up those objects, and then they practiced um, giving instructions to each other. For example, put the book on the table, put the, the dictionary on the desk, put the pencil in the drawer. And this is very, very popular workplace language and very functional, of course, in many other contexts. And they, they, and this was at level one, and they, they were so amazed at themselves that they were actually using real language and they were communicating to each other. And in fact, the other, the partner could not get it correct unless they understood them. So they had to practice real life strategies for uh, asking for clarification, et cetera. Um, so that was that. It's just coincidental that we did that today, and it was very, very successful. And it was all from these collaborative activities that are free online. Um, we can one more thing about beginning level. Uh, we can also place more emphasis on writing, using the writing process. Ventures is very strong in this res respect, since every unit has a writing process that's that's set around the writing process. Uh, there, there's a question that that. Um, people especially in the United States can relate to and this is um, how these standards relate to preparing learners for the workplace because so much of it seems very academic um, but there's also a big emphasis on a new legislation called WIOA the Workplace Innovation and Opportunities Act and um, I, I just like to because I'm I teach vessel vocational ESL and you know, in this webinar, we've shown you a lesson in which learners interpret diverse formats like a bar graph and timeline. These reading skills, as you know, are applicable in the workplace um, for uh, just as they are for preparing for college. The writing skills and the standards are also applicable in the workplace. Workers need to write shift reports, summaries, accident reports, and emails. Um, also, in every unit, we, there are these collaborative activities which promote soft skills and prepare learners for communication in the workplace. Okay. Um, I see a question on the screen here. Um, let's see. Um, let me go up a little bit. A question was, if these standards are like outcomes, what are they formed upon? Is it something you created yourselves? No, we didn't make these up. Um, they, they are like outcomes in a way, but they, as I said earlier, they come from the Common Core Standards for K-12. But the Common Core Standards were based on extensive studies across the country, talking with um, employers and um, college, uh, administ college uh, staff about what students need to be successful in the workplace and in college these days. And that's really what gave the content for these um, standards, um, uh, to be it's interesting. You may have heard that uh, one of the presidential candidates in the United States is proposing to do away with the Common Core standards. However, uh, at the adult level, that there's still a need for all those skills, no matter what that person does politically. Hopefully, that will not happen. <laughs> Another question. Um, Oh, you want to do the basic literacy? Yeah, it, the question is here about is basic literacy for pre-literacy learners? Um, 
Uh, yes, absolutely. In fact, um, at the basic level of ventures, we, there are two workbooks that go with the core textbook. One is a basic uh, workbook that assumes some literacy, but the literacy workbook is for learners with zero literacy who, who don't even recognize letters of the alphabet. But it's, it's, it's a lesson that correlates with the unit to practice some basic literacy in context of the topic of the unit. So it's absolutely for zero level learners. I have four students in my class right now that have never been to school in their lives um, and do not even read their own native language, which happens to be uh, Farsi since they're from Afghanistan. Let's talk about that. There, this is a great question um, from Emily. Are there units that encourage the development of skimming skills so that students are able to cherry pick relevant information from long text in order to answer more complex questions. There's a reading in every unit. It's lesson D. And in every book, in every unit, in lesson D, there's a reading. And there are reading tips in every one of those lessons. And the reading tips are, they, they change from skimming to scanning to look at the headings, look at the first sentence, look at the last sentence. You know, what, what's the main idea? There's predicting. And um, I think that we are really strong in um, addressing these ways of, of cherry picking of what students need to find to answer the questions and to understand the text. Is there another question there? I like, here's, here's no. one. Uh, here, here's a question. And um, I, again, I think, I think Gretchen might want to read this. Um, oh, here's the question. My students don't have college and career goals. They want to learn English or help their children or participate more in their communities. So why should I be interested in these college and career standards? OK, this is a, a good question, because our your own teachers at my program, for example, um, have just brought this up recently. Um, the first way to approach this is to say that goals change. And um, even though a student might not immediately have the goal of it going to college or, um, or going directly in the workplace, um, that might happen down the road. Um, so uh, there, here's an example. One example is a student will say, all I ever want to do is raise a family. And then at 35, I needed to go back to college so I could teach ESL. Um, so, what you want to be sure is that they have the skills needed to live and thrive in a more complex world. And a lot of these standards um, are just um, becoming basic survival skills. Another thing is that even though they may be focused on just raising their children right now, remember that their children are being subjected to all the new activities in their schools related to the Common Core standards. Um, the, the children you have to learn more complex reading, writing, and critical thinking skills. So when they bring that homework home, um, the parents are going to need to be able to understand what that is and help them with the homework. So for no one that reason alone, it's important that in adult education we also teach to these standards. Okay, I think we're going to go on to the next slide, which. We would, we would really like to know um, your takeaway from the webinar. Um, can you write in the chat box something that you heard today that you will implement in your program or something that stood out for you that you're really going to think about? We would really like to get your feedback on this. And it says multiple attend. Uh, you like the work, the worksheets. What I really mm -hmm. hope somebody's going to say mm -hmm. is that you're going to go to that, to the online teachers resource room and go to the collaboratives and find all the fun interactive activities that you can do with your students. And one thing to point out is that the um, for those that like the worksheets on the CCRs, um, they they work best going with the the article that may be in transitions unit, but they. T half of those worksheets technically could be used by themselves alone and still build some of these critical thinking skills. Um, another um, thing that you might be interested to know is that we are in the process of adding uh, worksheets like this correlated with the CCRs for to 
accompany books uh, three and four of Ventures. So that's a very exciting thing that's going to be happening in the next few months. Yeah, and I, I, I want to give Gretchen a little um, a little bat, pat on the back here because she's really done a, a lot of um, good work with that basic level. And um, we all worked on collaborative activities for the basic level, which were not there before. The other levels had them, levels one through four. And um, people said, where are they for basics? So they're there. Mm -hmm. And then people said, well, why aren't they in the higher levels? Don't they need it too? So we, in the past, uh, probably six months, we put in um, collaborative activities for the transitions level, which is the highest level. Using, I see uh, some people are going to use more pair and group work to encourage collaboration and discussion skills. You know, personally, I think this is critical in face-to-face -face ESL classes right now because um, what's happening is that there's a lot of language learning that's taking place online now. There's a lot of fancy software programs out there. Students can go online and learn English, probably grammar, whatever, but nothing takes the place of face-to-face uh, interaction, interactive discussions and conversations, and that's really why the learners are coming to our classes now, because that's the only place they really can get that um, interaction that they need so badly in the workplace and if they go on to college. And um, just to, to to conclude, because Gretchen was just talking about the computers, we don't want to forget to tell you that the, the CCRs, uh, they talk a lot about tech competence. And for example, in the Writing Anchor Standard 6, it says to use technology, including the internet, to produce and publish writing and to interact and collaborate with others. So, um, you know, technology, it, it's all of us that are lucky enough to have computers in our classes or computer labs or access to libraries where we can use the computers, those are all over the standards. Anything else? Okay. I um, think that I think that is going to conclude our webinar. Thank you for all, all right. your great questions. Thanks so much, uh, Donna and Gretchen. That was great. Thanks for everyone for attending. As I've mentioned a couple times in the chat, we will be sending out a recording of the webinar. So if you came in late or if you experienced any sound issues, you'll be able to watch the thing um, in, in total. And also we'll be sending out a certificate of completion. So be on the lookout for that. And thanks again for everyone for attending. And thanks again to Donna and Gretchen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.